Sometimes the news is just a bit weird. Well, here's some weird, some might say pointless bits of news for you, but we're not about to pass judgment. An actual real life city planner whose actual job is to plan cities has just been caught in a planning proposal. The UK's Eastern Daily Press newspaper ran a report about real life proposals for 10,000 new homes in mid Norfolk, which sneakily used the screenshot in its eight page brochure. It was an image posted on the city's Skyline subreddit three years ago and is placed here, unlabeled or credited between a page that features a sketch master plan and a page featuring a site analysis. The company behind the proposals, Lampro, were busted by lifelong gamer Matt Carding Woods, who spotted the image on page three of the proposals. The 33-year-old told the Eastern Daily Press, quote, I'm very familiar with the game and there are a number of things that make it obvious. The most glaring are the small patches of brown trees around isolated buildings at the bottom. These are incinerators and the game represents the pollution they cause by turning patches of trees around them brown. Also to the bottom centre of the image, a section of railway ends in a distinctive curved stub. Oh, it's the classic distinctive curved <laughs> stub and uh, brown incinerator patches. It gets them every time, they all, it gets them all. Lanpro responded to the discovery saying that the image's use was educational and the document was only intended to be distributed internally. The company also said there had been several examples in the past of the serious use of this software, meaning city skylines, to model, engage and explain projects. That's something that apparently has been done in Stockholm, Sweden in the past. The crux of it is that this newspaper have slammed um, these planners, or this, this planner, for using a city skyline to illustrate a, a mock-up a picture of where it should be. I mean, I'm surprised they don't use it more often. That game is awesome, I've played it. The way that it deals with like traffic and stuff like that, I'm sure, I, I would, 100% guarantee that the traffic would flow a lot better if those planning, the city planners, would play city skylines yeah. because it, it throws tough like traffic situations at you. I'm telling you. Don't Basically, know whether, a training exercise. It is. It's not it's, it should be. They should have these planners playing that game because it's f***ing good. What's weird though is that they didn't even model the thing. They just they just found an old picture from, <laughs> from Reddit and went, ah, we'll just check that out. Yeah. It'll look like that, yeah. And in more, why is this even a headline news? Destiny 2 players have collectively spent over 25 years deleting shaders. Shaders in Destiny are items which recolor your in-game armor and weapons. In Destiny 1, they recolored your entire character and were infinitely reusable. In Destiny 2, they're single-use items that color just one piece of gear at a time. And because Destiny 2 places a limit on your actual inventory space to carry all these disposable shaders, players spent a lot of time deleting the ones they don't want. Bungie has now revealed that so far, 807,635,100 24 shaders have been deleted. Reddit user SlickeryV calculated that since it takes one second to delete each shader, players have spent 25.59 years deleting shaders. Thankfully, the big Destiny 2 update arriving on August 28th will allow you to mass delete your shaders. For everyone who's been asking us for a day, when are you going to do the shaders story? Tell everyone how many years people, players have yeah. spent deleting shaders. There you go. All right, for everyone who's been crying out for this. I, yeah, big story. I remember when Shaders was a bit, a bit of an outcry over Shaders and Death. There actually was, it? yeah. Because because uh, it was a microtransaction thing, isn't it? It's like yeah. they, they used to be they used to be re infinitely reusable, but yeah. they were single use because they're a micro tied to a microtransaction. But that was a different story, and it and it wasn't about uh, uh, it wasn't the, the twenty six years players were spent deleting them. Yeah, that was a more shadier story, you could say. Ah. <laughs> and if you've ever been playing a Fallout game and thought, hmm, baked bloat fly, that sounds tasty. Well, you're in luck. There's now an official Fallout recipe book. Fallout, the Vault Dweller's official cookbook, is jam-packed with some, frankly, horrendous sounding recipe ideas. Mole rat man chiotti, mole rat wonder meat dip, and something called Carol's Mystery Meat Stew, to name a few. But it is a real recipe book written by Victoria Rosenthal, who's something of a specialist in video game inspired recipes. The book includes 78 Fallout themed recipes and is out on October the 23rd, just in time for Christmas, if you've got 26 quid to spend on a gift. Uh, I mean, iguana on a stick? 
Iguana, iguana dice. Step one. step one. Get an iguana. <laughs> Carol's mystery meets you, though. I'm. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. The mystery meets you in a Fallout universe. Uh, you know that's that sounds a bit problematic. But on a serious note, though, Jake loves cooking, right? And Victoria Rosenthal. By any, if you if you're watching this video, you're probably not. There's probably very 0.01% chance of you watching it. But if you are, please send us a book. Can copy we have with a copy of book? Because J Jake would get will be all over Carol's mystery meets meets you. That's for sure. Make a whole batch of it for the PGT crew. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we'll be ill the next week. Yeah. So there you go, just some little pieces of news that we thought were pretty cool. What did you like there? Let us know down in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Should be another one right there if you want to start. And a link to Patreon if you want to support the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.